Hi guys and girls. Today we are going to do Tales from Tech Support, don't forget to like and subscribe so you can see my next videos. Let's get right into it. If you can rewire a plug, you can rewire a computer, right? This tale comes from an encounter with one of my old freelance clients, some years ago. Your cast of characters. Miss Griancy, a dashing ne'er-do-well, armed with tools and cables, zipping around the city on a motorbike to put out technological fires, occasionally literally. Lady Sybil Rankin, Miss Griancy's darling then-girlfriend, light of his life, font of sarcasm, and occasional reader of his Reddit posts, hello, dear. Bloody Stupid Johnson, the client in question, who often before and sometimes after calling me would try earnestly to fix whatever problem was occurring, which then usually involved him compounding the issues. The tale begins. Some background, Bloody Stupid Johnson was actually a really nice guy, an accountant by trade who had just gone freelance himself and was struggling to get his computing set up to work. I'd got him set up with a decent laptop, a server, desktop tower with Win Server 2012 installed on it, on which popular account software's server-side software was installed, and a two-bay NAS. The only problem he was that he was exceptionally clueless and managed to break everything he touched by dint of sheer foolishness and overestimation of his technical ability. He paid well and on time though with no quibbles, made an excellent cup of coffee, and on each occasion he messed up he would admit fault and promised he would stop messing around with things he didn't understand, only to go ahead and do exactly that the next time things went wrong. I'd never seen him operate a piece of technology successfully, let alone fix one, but nevertheless, he persisted. Phone rings. Miss Griancy, hello, this is Miss Griancy. Bloody Stupid Johnson, yes, this is Bloody Stupid Johnson. I'm sorry to have to call you, is there any chance you could come over and look at my machine? I'm struggling to get into popular accounting software, it said it couldn't connect to the server. Miss Griancy, alright Bloody Stupid Johnson, we'll walk through the basic troubleshooting and then assess from there. So first of all, go look at the file server. Make sure it's on there'll be a green light on the front, and then have a look at the back of it, there should be an ethernet cable connected. Check that's in nice and tight. Interminable waiting period during which I begin to get worried he's somehow managed to electrocute himself. Bloody stupid Johnson, so the cable was plugged in all the way and on so I think it's fine. Miss Griancy, right oh. And your machine, is that connected to the internet properly? Bloody stupid Johnson, I think so, I can go on websites and things like that, I just can't get into my accounts. Miss Griancy, okay, I can probably move a few things around and get to you this afternoon. I'll message you a time. An intermission ensues. You, dear reader, may picture the journey however you wish, perhaps a rugged man in leathers riding a Kawasaki Ninja at high speed on a sunny day across a windswept American Vista determination in his eyes. However, I will let you in on the reality, which was a scrawny guy on a cheap 125cc hairdryer on wheels struggling through traffic at 30 miles per hour through an English city in the wind and rain. Reality is a cruel, drizzle-filled mistress. Knock on door. Bloody stupid Johnson, ah, Miss Griancy. I'm glad you could make it here so quickly. Miss Griancy, no problem. So, let's have a quick look at your machine, and then the server. Then I'll get into it and take a look through. Machine's fine, all connected, and I can actually remote into the file server from it. He's right though, trying to launch his accounting software gets me all sorts of errors, mainly about not being able to access the data. I immediately smell a hard drive rat. This particular setup was unusual and, I'll admit, a tiny bit hacky, largely because Bloody Stupid Johnson had a relatively low budget and was allergic to even considering cloud-based options for the accounting software he wanted to use, it's just not safe, storing these things on the internet. 
I had walked him through his other options and we settled on using a RAID 1 array on a server for the storage of the account's data, with a nightly backup to NAS, and a cold storage backup the backup to external drive procedure he followed on the first day of every month. I take a gander at at the RAID array and sure enough, it's doomed. One disk is completely kaput, and it looks like it spouted a load of corrupted data which got mirrored to the other on the way to failing. This is why RAID is not a backup, folks. Popular accounting software is obviously rather unhappy about this. But it's okay, I can fix this in fairly short order. Just need a new disk and then we'll restore from the NAS. The drive's only a year old, but these things happen. Oh well. I check the NAS and sure enough last night's backup is sitting there, winking at me. Miscreancy, so, looking at this. One of the hard drives on the server has failed for reasons unknown, and it's been kind enough to send a load of garbage to the other one in the process. That's why popular accounting software isn't working. Bloody stupid Johnson, okay. So, how long is this going to take to fix? Am I going to lose anything? Miscreancy, well, the actual process won't take very long, we just need to get a replacement disk install it, and then restore from the backup. It backs up nightly, so you'll only lose anything you've done today. Bloody stupid Johnson, and how soon can you get replacement discs? Miscreancy, I can get you one tomorrow for an extortionate price from large computer store chain, or if I tell you the make and model you can put in an order with reasonably priced company and have it delivered here, we'll only need one of them. You let me know when it's delivered, and then I'll arrange to do the install. Bloody stupid Johnson ponders this for a moment, but the money trumped the convenience, and he decided to order the disc online and have it delivered. It was gone 6pm on a Friday at this point so I left him to do so and drove home, confirming the make and model of the disc needed. Three days pass, and late one evening I get a phone call. Bloody stupid Johnson, hi miscreancy. Just to let you know those things have arrived. Miscreancy, sorry, bloody stupid Johnson, did you say things? We only needed the one. Bloody stupid Johnson, well I thought, in case we needed one again, so I ordered a spare. When can you come and get this done? I'm away for a couple days but I'll be back on Wednesday. Miscreancy, Wednesday's busy but I can do Thursday afternoon. It shouldn't take very long as the procedure is quite simple. About 80% of the work I'm going to do involves a screwdriver. That last sentence pretty much led to what happened the next day, and I do partially blame myself. Had I known then what I know now, I never would have implied to a guy like bloody stupid Johnson that sometimes solving an it related problem essentially boils down to wielding a screwdriver and then some not particularly difficult computer stuff. Don't get me wrong, it is absolutely true, but the suggestion to some middle-aged men who consider themselves handy that this is in any way a job for tools will inspire an attempt to resolve this themselves, usually without checking with someone who knows what they are doing. Instead they'll leverage the anonymity of internet browsing, search something they think is what they need to do but is in fact unrelated, find a video that they think shows them how to do it, and execute it in great haste, breaking loose all hell. All hail the YouTube tutorial, breaker of systems, deliverer of headaches. In a perfect world, technological advice would only be delivered to people who can use a search engine with sufficient specificity as to ensure the instructions actually match what the user is attempting. Anyway, I digress. Days passed, life went on and Wednesday rolled around. Lady Sibyl Rankin Vims had gone gallivanting internationally, leaving me free that evening to eat food she would disapprove of, stay up playing video games, and then wake up on the couch at 5am to discover our two cats and one dog had decided I make an excellent mattress, before administering caffeine and heading out to work. My day was not going well, the usual idiocies, but at 2pm I rolled up to bloody stupid Johnson's home, ready to rock. Door knock. Bloody stupid Johnson, looking suspiciously cheerful, afternoon. Come on in. Miscreancy, hello. So, I'll just grab the discs and then I can get started. 
Restoring from the backup should be the most tedious part of the process but hopefully it'll be fairly swift. Bloody stupid Johnson, well, I thought I'd lend a hand, so I've gone ahead and swapped the discs out for you. After all, I can handle anything that just needs a screwdriver, I'll leave the complicated stuff to you though. If you can rewire a plug, you can rewire a computer, right? Yes, that's right. He, disaster man, killer of machines, has gone ahead and started on his own. I believe this is the moment I contemplated just turning around and leaving. Miscreancy, ooh okay, bloody stupid Johnson. Do you want to walk me through exactly what you've done so I know where we're up to? Bloody stupid Johnson, yep, so I powered down the server last night, and then unscrewed and swapped both discs out in the little trays. I've not powered it back up yet though. Miscreancy, alright. I would have advised you to wait, just to be sure, but let's go take a look. Had he simply swapped both the healthy and dying disc in the Windows Server RAID array out for healthy discs, while it was powered off, we'd actually be okay. I relaxed for a moment, then realized he'd used another plural. Trays. The desktop running the server had three mounted discs in two bays. So I figure he's swapped out the OS disc for a blank disc, and one of the RAID array's discs, and that's still fine. He hasn't tried to boot it, it's offline, and it was powered off during the change. I can swap the system disk back in, or worst case, reinstall stuff. It'll be a much longer day but I can cope with that. We're heading to the area the server is stored in, and I notice that the front light is on. So the server is powered up. Then I see that the NAS is off, and next to it lies a telltale screwdriver. He has swapped out the discs in the wrong server. But again, while powered off. This shouldn't be fatal. I can still fix this. This is what I keep telling myself, while I try to phrase what I have to say next diplomatically. Miscreancy, I'm right in thinking this, the NAS, is the server you've done this on. He nods, unfortunately it's the wrong server. This is the NAS, where we store the backups. The desktop down there is the Windows server with the broken disk. But it's okay, it sounds like you did everything correctly, so replacing the new disks with the old ones in here should bring it back up no problem. Bloody stupid Johnson, but I thought you said the broken disks were in the server. That's not a server, it's just a computer. Miscreancy, a server is just a computer, one that runs differently to a computer you or I might use, but still a computer. Usually a fancy, expensive one with really expensive components. But for your use case, we didn't need that, so we're using a normal one with normal components. But as I said, it's not a problem. If you can grab the disks you removed, we can swap them back in, then take down the Windows server, and proceed as planned. Bloody stupid Johnson's face has fallen while I explain this to him. Bloody stupid Johnson, well, the thing is, I had to do some computer safety training back when I worked for a large accounting firm, and they said that if you have an old computer or disk you're getting rid of you shouldn't just bin it or recycle it straight off. They said, my jaw starts the process of dropping as I begin to comprehend where this is going, that you need to destroy it, either by unscrewing it and shredding it or if you don't have a shredder. They said in a pinch you can go at it for a while with some nails and a hammer and make sure the disc inside gets smashed up. For the pedants, yes, this was HDD, not SSD, it was years ago and he was touchy about paying the extra so I didn't push it dot. I figured you'd know where to recycle them and stuff but I'd make sure no one could get anything off it just in case before I handed it over. I didn't have any nails so I drilled a couple of screws into the discs and then went at them with a hammer. They got pretty smashed up. Miscreancy, and you did that to both of them. Bloody stupid Johnson, yeah. But we can still get my accounts back, right? The hopeful look in bloody stupid Johnson's eyes sadly does nothing to soothe the rage I'm feeling, particularly when he shows me the two drives. He drilled all the way through the platters, inserted screws, then hit them repeatedly and by the looks of it extremely hard. 
The end result is a clear indication that he has some repressed rage, because they now resemble something that might win a Turner Prize. I take a moment to recover some cool before replying. Miss Griancy, um. Well, actually, no, not really. I mean I can, but it'll be the backup to the external hard drive from the first of the month. It's the 22nd now, so you're going to lose quite a lot of this month's work. And we need another hard disk. And I'll need to reinstall the NAS software. I can get you up and running the account software with the data from three weeks ago today, but you'll have to do manual backups onto the external hard drive nightly until I can get the NAS on, and we need a replacement disk for that, so it'll be another couple of days. It'll take me another afternoon to get the NAS, data backups and such all working again once we have that. Bloody stupid Johnson, but I followed the instructions perfectly. Miss Griancy, what instructions? Shown YouTube video, unfortunately, as I said, the NAS wasn't the server with the broken disks, it's the one with the backups. The desktop computer is the server that needed the replacements, so the instructions were for the wrong things. I won't dive too deeply into the following conversation, in which he actually got very upset and close to tears at one point. He did admit it was his error, and he was very sorry. We got him up and running on popular accounting software that day, and the following Tuesday the NAS was restored and normal service resumed. Normally when he did something like this, it was only my time that got wasted, time he had to pay for, so there was no data loss or major downtime. This time he had lost days of work, and I believe it probably did teach him to stop trying to do things he wasn't really equipped to do. I wouldn't know, as this was the last bit of work I did for him. Shortly after this I left the free roaming life of a freelancer behind me, to re-embrace a world of dull corporate stability, but markedly cheaper vehicle insurance. There was one upside to this though, which was the exchange I had with Lady Sybil Rampkin upon her return from her overseas adventure, after having relayed the whole saga. Lady Sybil Rampkin, so, to be clear, he decided to go ahead without you, largely because he thought it was a case of wielding a screwdriver and replacing some stuff, and you could do the more it related bits. Miss Griancy, yep. Lady Sybil Rampkin, and someone told him recently to smash old discs into oblivion, so he did that ahead of your arrival by screwing screws into the discs and then hitting them with a hammer. Miss Griancy, also yep. Lady Sybil Rampkin, so what you're really saying is, he screwed himself. Well, when faced with punning of that high-level quality, there's only one thing a man can do. Reader, I married her. TL, DR, never tell a user what you're going to do before you do it, in case they try to do it themselves. They will mess up, and you will both be sorry. But if you do, your girlfriend may make a joke so funny you simply had to marry her. Edit, added ATL, DR after multiple requests. Secondary edit, platinum, gold and silver. Good lord, people of Reddit, you are extremely generous. I hope you enjoyed this post, and I will no doubt be returning to write another in the future. In the meantime, if you are confused by the naming schema, please go read Gods. Gods. By Sir Terry Pratchett and then set aside the next few months to ferociously devour everything else he ever wrote.